Welcome to 2A Cops, Cops Supporting Gun Rights. My name is Keith, and in this episode, we are going to talk about how the ATF is going door to door to get people's FRT triggers or the forest reset trigger. Before we get into it, if you want to hear about law enforcement's perspective on gun rights, not like law enforcement as a whole, but street cops, the guys that are working the beat, the guys that are answering your 911 calls, if you want to know what they think about the Second Amendment and what they're doing to support your Second Amendment, then go ahead, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, show the algorithm some love because we've had some enormous growth and it's because you are doing those things. You are leaving a comment, you're subscribing, all of those things help us get our message out. All right, so let's get into it. There is a video and we're going to show that video of two ATF agents that are contacted uh, the guy who owns Moonlight Industries and is basically asking for his FRT trigger. All right, so I'm not gonna get into the legalities of the FRT trigger. I see both sides of the debate where some people say it's a machine gun, some people say it's not. I do love the ingenuity in our gun community where they have come up with some really cool things to kind of show how stupid the NFA is and how it doesn't really work. I do like that ingenuity, but let's get beyond the legality of FRT trigger. That's for other YouTubers to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is the cops that showed up. I'm going to talk about what cops think, what cops are saying right now about it. We're going to look at the video. We're going to talk about what, what the gentleman behind the camera is saying, what you can do better when the ATF shows up to your house to come get that. All right. So first off, let's just start with that video for a moment and let's just watch we're going to watch a little bit and then we're going to pause at appropriate times to talk about what's going on in the video streets okay. oh, really? so we make like low visibility oh really we specialize in like uh right now we have a contract with seal team six actually okay. we make their uh like low okay hold on just for a second this is a message to the cops out there i do train law enforcement officers on how to how to do investigations if you're going to go out in public and you're going to do enforcement which this is enforcement then you need to be clearly identifiable wearing concealable body armor on the outside and what you're going to see in a minute is a completely crapped out plate carrier if you're going to go out in public and act as law enforcement and go do seizures or whatever, you need to dress appropriately. You need to be identifiable as law enforcement and uh, you, need to, you need to do better. All right, but let's get back into it. Low visibility MP7 rigs. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So were you expecting us? Uh, well, what didn't surprise me when I saw a guy in a plate carrier showing up. So. <laughs> well, Got the Ultima OTBs on. So. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so the reason why we're here is because um, I don't know. I'm sure you're aware that just recently the ATF um, classified the uh, FRTs, the the force sure. reset triggers, mm -hmm. um, as um, as uh, machine guns. Yeah. So we are aware that you may have purchased some of these FRTs. Okay. So now we are having like the whole agency has has um, is basically reaching out to these. Start off from the beginning. She asked, "Were you expecting us?" Don't answer. You can answer if you want, but every time you and you're going to see this in this video. The more you answer, the more information you give up that can be used against you later. Okay. Were you expecting us? You can say like, "No, I don't know why the F the AFT would be contacting me." Or, you know, I assert my Fifth Amendment right. You can ask questions, but I'm not going to answer anything. Please contact my lawyer. And then have your lawyer's number ready because you're going to need one. Okay, you, you, have, you have ATF at your door. You're, you're going to need a lawyer. So just make sure you have a lawyer's name and phone number. And then just assert your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and don't answer. Okay, As a cop, I've had people do that to me before. I don't get pissed off about it. It's like, good on you for looking out for yourself. So just be careful with answering those questions. You really don't want to give up too much. Purchasers. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, one more thing I wanted to add with that. She mentioned that the ATF is going around to different people to go collect these. How did they get that information? Okay, look, when the forced reset trigger came out, I saw that and went, ooh, I want one of those. But there is no way. I know what's going to come. I know that, that, you're, that they're doing that to subvert the NFA. I think it's a great idea. We need more innovation like that. I love it. But I also know that the ATF is going to come after people at some point when they get their information together. So when you bought that with a credit card, when you bought it from the company, then you left a trail. There's always going to be a digital trail. Unless you bought it at a gun show or somewhere else with cash, There, people are going to be able to trace 
where it came from. And so you just want to be cognizant of that. So if you have a forced reset trigger, you are going to want to make sure you have a lawyer's name and info ready. And then you want to be clean legally, meaning make sure that you don't have that anywhere around because they are going to come after you. Now, this guy from Moonline Industries, I mean, they're going to be pissed off about this. And if they can find a way to get a warrant to come back into his house to come look for it, then that's what they're going to do. So when I say make yourself legally clean, I'm not telling you how to do YouTube censors. I'm not telling anybody how to do anything illegal. I'm, I'm just letting you know, figure it out, be clean legally that if somebody did a search warrant that you're good. Okay. I know all of this will be figured out in court at some point. I personally don't want to be the case law that all this gets decided on because there's a lot of money lost and a lot of heartache that goes along with being part of case law. All right, let's get back into it. Uh, we have to uh, pick them up. <laughs> you know, they're okay. illegal. So. so I won't um, be answering any questions today. Um, I don't have any comments on this subject. Uh, I won't be uh, giving you anything. Right there. I won't be giving you anything. He did great. And dude, if you're, if you're watching this right now, you did a good job. I'm proud of you for standing up for your rights. You handled yourself very well. But this is what I'm talking about where we, like one of the tactics that I used routinely when I was dealing with drug dealers or whoever is I would always like have awkward silence and I would just let it sit there and I would just stare at him. It's human nature to fill that silence with speech. You feel like you have to talk. And things come out that help them later down the road. So I'm not giving you anything. A lot of people can interpret that as, no, I've got it, but I'm not giving it to you. Guy from Moonlight, if you're, if you're watching this, you did a great job. And you're doing exactly what you should do. And I, I applaud you for putting it up on the internet. It's brave to do that. I appreciate it. But for everybody that watches this, they were going to have ATF show up at their door. Just simply say, I assert my Fifth Amendment right. Here's my lawyer's information. I don't want to talk to you. If you don't have a warrant, I would like you to get off my property. Please contact my lawyer and leave it at that. And then that's it. You don't have to say anything else. Everything you say, more things are going to slip out like I'm not giving you anything. Okay, like He can simply really have nothing to give them. But you're going to see the cop in the back pick that up. Okay, so you... Um... Are you refusing to give us the trigger? I'm not refusing anything. I won't be answering any questions. Okay. Um, but okay, so we are aware that you do, you did purchase FRTs. Again, you wouldn't be in trouble if you just give those up to us, or okay. if you sold them, you can tell me you sold them. Sure. You know, okay. and you, again, you're not going to be in trouble for that. I understand. So, um, we're just here, honestly, like, just to pick them up. Sure. <laughs> sure. It's a bigger, it's a bigger conversation than what you're having right now. You know, you, you decide as you go the rules, right? Um, again, that's not something I decided. It's not. I know. Your guys are just here. You guys are just here. Yeah. I don't disagree with you at all. I understand. I, I don't want to be here anymore. Than you want sure. It, well, it's, the problem is, is you are the people who, who go and knock on the doors, right? Mm -hmm. So when they make new laws and you break them, or you go against the citizens, because they've spoken what they buy and what they do. The citizens are speaking, but the government is making their decisions on what they think. They're not being servants to the citizens, right? Okay, good point. I just want to point something out that I've noticed with this video, that a lot of times ATF has task forces, and on those task forces are regular cops. Just my gut instinct tells me that guy right there is, is actually a police officer that's a task assigned to the ATF task force. So he's like, there's different levels of law enforcement. You've got your local law enforcement, which is your county, state, your city police. It would include game wardens, alcohol, beverage control, all those kinds of people. And then you have feds. And federal law enforcement would be the lady on the right. She's an ATF agent. She's wearing an ATF badge. She enforces federal law, but can't enforce state and local law. The guy on the left, I think is probably a police officer. Why I say that is just the way he's presenting himself is more like I've seen street cops handle themselves. And then also his gear doesn't look like the typical ATF gear that I've seen show up. When you're on a task force, sometimes you're using your own personal gear or not your personal gear, but your city issue gear. And the reason why we have these task forces is because local law enforcement can't enforce federal law. Federal law enforcement can't enforce local law. So you combine them together and they cross swear in the local law enforcement to enforce federal law. So you can, you can do both. I do want to make it a point. I like what Moonlight Industries guy is saying where, you know, he's, he's saying like, hey, basically you got to pick a side. 
And I, I want to make a point to everybody that's listening out there. I've known a lot of cops on these ATF task forces that have left because they're doing stuff like this. They've left because they don't, they don't want to be involved in it. And the problem is, is that you, the YouTube viewer, the 2A community, you never see that. You don't see the hundreds of cops that have left these jobs because they don't agree with what's going on and there's no big production about it. But then you got two that show up to it and, you know, she puts it very nicely, right? She tries to minimize everything, which is, you know, she's doing a fine job as far as like trying to make everything peaceful, but she's just, and we got to come take them. No, you're, you're confiscating is what you're doing, right? And th this is all consensual, okay? It's called a knock and talk. A knock and talk is where knock on the door and you say, hey, you're doing this that's illegal. We would like you to give it up. And then you give it up on your own. Now, they could do you for that or they could not do you for that. It's up to them. It's up to the attorney general. There's a lot of stuff in there. You're admitting to a crime, okay? Knock and talks are effective. It's what is used when you don't have enough to get a warrant. Now, what you say here could lead them to develop enough probable cause to get a warrant and come back. So look, keep your mouth shut. I assert my Fifth Amendment right. Here's my lawyer's phone number and information. Now, if you're an FFL and they come knocking, you don't have a choice. They have to come, they can come in and do an inspection. And that's the way it is. And you have to abide by that with the warrant. You just want to minimize what you're saying. Now, the officer right here that's freeze frame, I could tell you right now, he he the the just his mannerism, the way he's acting. You don't want to be there because he's probably a gun guy and he realizes it's going to be all over the internet and he's done. Right. So he knows that there are, I just, my point, big point I want to make to you guys is there's a lot of cops that are leaving these jobs because they don't want to partake in this kind of stuff. All right. And I'm sure you guys are going to all hash it out in the comments down below. Um, looking forward to it. All right, here we go. And, and, and all, all right. we're saying is, you know, like, I mean, we, like you said, you know, we just hear, we, we are the ones that just come and knock on the door. We sure. The laws. We don't make the laws. So, sure. I understand. You know, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're, we're, you're not in trouble. I mean, no, I don't understand that. I just want to make a point for a minute. I was, I worked in the land of unjust laws. I literally worked in, in, in the San Francisco Bay area in California. Our legislature would routinely pass laws that were unlawful and unconstitutional. And all of us ignored them and we moved on. Okay. Look, the excuse of, oh, I'm just enforcing this law. If in, in here at the FRT trigger, I see both sides of the debate. Okay. I get it on both sides, but you really got to figure out what you're going to do here. If you're going to be the ones going door to door, or if you're going to go choose to do something else. If for the officers that are watching this, I suggest that you go watch my video on how to ignore an unconstitutional order. Okay, now I'm not debating the constitutionality of FRT triggers. I'll let you guys do that in the uh, in the comments. Okay, but I did a video that you can see here on how to ignore an unlawful order and survive it. Why? Because I've done it. I've ignored lots of unlawful orders. In that particular video, I talk about how my my city passed a law that violated the First Amendment, and it was a blatant slap on the constitution and how i survived basically pushing back on that so go take a look at that guys you know, no i didn't do anything wrong <laughs> exactly that's so, yeah i don't have i love good law-abiding cops who are who are good people are doing what they do and i understand you have family speed you're, you're just doing what you're told so you don't get fired from your job but you there is honestly most cops don't care anymore it says everybody's like oh you don't want to get fired this is the worst job in America right now. If if half the cops are have their foot out the door looking for something else, so yeah. So I just want to make that commentary there. Is a problem that exists, and at some point you have to make your decision on which side of the team you're on. So I won't be answering any questions if I'm not being detained. I'm not under arrest. I'll just be leaving now. Okay. Um, I won't be able to help you with what you're okay. trying to find. Um. So, and just to be clear, so then now you know that if you were to be in possession of these FRDs, then, then you would be uh, basically uh, breaking the law. You, okay. you, at the age. Okay, hold on. So what she's doing is she's laying it down because she's going to write a report later saying she went to this house and tried to get the FRT trigger. And this is what he said. 
they're going to go pull this video off of YouTube. They're going to put that into evidence. And then they're, how we're going over this conversation with a microscope, they're going to do the exact same thing in court. And they're going to write this down. So if he gets caught later with an FRT trigger, they're going to bring this out to show guilt and that he knew that that was illegal and he can't use his excuse of, I didn't know the FRTs were illegal. But that's what they're doing. But then he continues on. Don't. And guy from Moonlight Industries, dude, I applaud you for coming out and saying, I'm not trying to ding you. I'm just trying to help people out. If they're in a similar situation, simply say, I assert my Fifth Amendment right. I don't wish to talk to you. Here's my lawyer's contact information. Please contact him for everything. Is there anything else I can do for you? Am I being detained? Nope. I've got things to do. I've got to go. Please contact my lawyer. We'll handle everything through my lawyer. And then deal with your lawyer. Okay. Unless you're an FFL. <laughs> Then you're, then you're screwed. You, it's part of having a license. You're going to be in trouble. TF claims that they, they're making rules, but there's, no, there's been no vote. There's been no congressional hearing um, that says you have the law. You don't make law, right? We, I don't. Yeah, the ATF doesn't make law. Again. Um, no. Again, but it's- I don't want, listen, I, right now I seem like a huge dick. Like, I'm like, fuck you guys, but I really don't. You're not being a huge phallic symbol. What you're doing is you're standing up for your rights, and I applaud you for it. Good for you. All right. feel that way at all. I just can't, in good faith, when I make the gear for every high-end special operations unit in America right now, that's all I do. That's all I do is support these freedom fighters. A lot of law enforcement SWAT guys, I can't take part in an overstep past the line that says, this is or is not legal just because you have a badge, you can still do crimes, right? Right. So if the American people feel like, the ATF is committing crimes right now, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I just okay. can't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, bro, good job for everybody else. If you have an FRT trigger, just know that the ATF is going to come knocking on your door unless you paid cash at a, at somewhere from somewhere, you know, in a parking lot deal or whatever. You have got to just say, I assert my Fifth Amendment right. Please contact my lawyer and then hand it, hand over your card. Okay. You don't want to become case law case law comes with heartache expense and everything else okay so that's it for now hash it out in the comments don't forget to subscribe if you like our content subscribe like the video every little bit helps uh that's all i've got for now remember your abcs always be caring